Uh, thank you. Actually, uh, there was supposed to be a debate, Pravash, between you and me. <laughs> and uh, so I had prepared a debate. Uh, but I think, uh, uh, let me put uh, both, of, uh, both of the sides to the picture first. So artificial intelligence is actually now going, to, is perverted nearly all fields of life. And cardiology is not going to be an exception to that. So artificial intelligence will come in and will have a profound role in cardiology. However, it cannot replace the cardiologist. That is what I need to contend with. It is a tool to augment and extend the effectiveness of a cardiologist. Nothing more. You cannot give the controls to them. Now, see, we've had tools. We have had very intelligent tool. And this is Lenek who described the stethoscope. That was probably the most one of the most profound tools which a, a doctor had, and it was so successful. Now it's a representation symbol of our own entire medical community. So this is a tool, and this tool open was intelligent, and it opened up a host of findings and made us able to treat patient much better. So what is the problem with artificial intelligence? Now artificial intelligence, if you see, it has the immense usefulness. It collects huge amount of data, collates it, uses some algorithms to make sense of it, does some self-learning, which may be supervised or unsupervised, and there's something called a machine learning as well, and actually presents us a case. But you have to understand it lacks certain parts as well, which is not going to be replaced by a machine. The first thing which I find most, it has not any major creativity yet. It is emotionless and empathy. We know that medical practice is not about machine learning. It is not about didactic data management. It is about dealing with a patient who has emotions, who has uh, expectations, ethics of that, and some amount of high cost. So let us say about creativity. The problem with uh, artificial devices is that you need to program them with data set, which is already available. It does not question like any other, uh, like a basic scientist. So let me show you this. This is basically Alexander Fleming, pro probably one of the most profound medical research scientists, saved many more lives than actually in the history of all religions put together. And if he did not question, why the bacteria was not growing on the petri dish where the moles were growing, he wouldn't have discovered penicillin, which went on to save. Now, that was not a logical question. That was just an intuitive question and observational, and at the end of the day, a question. Now, artificial intelligence, unfortunately, does not, has not yet learned to question intuitively. So, real uh, sort of recent experiences. The, it's called the defeat of logic. Artificial intelligence will always follow a certain amount of logic, which is being programmed onto. Say like the folic acid, which we all certainly knew, decreased homocysteine levels. And we all knew homo increased homocysteine levels is a marker of atherosclerosis. But when you put it into a very, very complex system in the HPS2 trial, folic acid was a failure. It did not decrease atherosclerotic events. So that is the problem that logic, especially machine-led logic, does not often work in a living system, which not only is, is, is a system, it's a reactive system. So basically, supervised machine learning is very, very important. It aids the cardiologist in many ways, like an ECG interpretation. It helps you to do, but ultimately, you have to understand the quality and the magnitude will depend on the data set you have programmed it into. And that is done by a human being, and that has to be done by a human being. So what is the actual evidence? Is there some actual evidence? This is, a, I'm quoting a paper from Frizzle, who tried artificial intelligence to predict the readmission rate of heart failure patients, a very common problem. And in spite of using very complicated algorithms, both statistical and with machine learning, it was no better than clinical predictions. And why was that? Because 
the one of the major determinants of readmission is social determinants of health, which seems very hard to code in an artificial language. So if you do not include the social determination of health, you will not get it. So artificial intelligence is going to be a huge aid. I'm not saying that it should not be in cardiology, but it should not be the only future of cardiology. There has to be more than that. Let us see the other problem with artificial intelligence or statistics as well. It's called dichotomania, which means it's either yes or no. It's a binary system, zero, one, yes, no. Now, disease process are not dichotomous. They are a continuous sort of a waveform, which there is a continuous increase or decrease in risk or continuous increase or decrease in event rates. So let us argue that if you see the US Preventive Service Task Force, and they took 10% event rate as a high risk case. So if someone had a 10% chance of an event rate, you put them onto a high dose of statin, you categorize that and hide it. But what about the patients on the borderline? So what would do who are sitting on the borderline 9.5% event rate, you would classify them as relatively low risk, not give them statin, and 10.5% a high risk, and you would give them a statin. So is that small difference, is it important? Because that is the problem with any statistical machine that it's very dichotomous, it's binary, yes and no. But unfortunately, disease process is continuous, risk profiling is continuous. And finally, I think basically this is very, very important. It's emotionless and empathy lack. That is important. We are actually medical persons and we have to actually deal with patients. So if you see, this is one of the most ancient pictures of a doctor's relationship to a patient. This is a dying child of rheumatic. It was painted by the father of the child. And this man cannot do much. This is very old. See, you had rheumatic fever. The doctor sits there waiting and holding the hands of the patient and the parents, seeing the patient out of the world. That is empathy. A machine will do this. AI response, 99.9% mortality. That's it. So that is the problem which, which we will not get from AI. So what will happen? Would you give all the controls to AI? In that case, you have to replace healing with treating, caring with managing, and listening by uh, sort of imaging. All artificially done, but that is something which you should not do. So do you want to present a picture, a pensive, caring doctor, but knowledgeable, but worsened with AI as a tool? Or you want something like a, a Star Trek movie hero, where you just have a probe standing distantly treating patient at cohorts, not as individuals. So that is, that is something you need to worry about. The other thing I will uh, sort of tell you a case which I did and an AI system cannot respond to new situ situation. So if you have not come across similar problems before, it will not be able to predict and it will also not be able to guide you to management. So let us come to this gentleman. This is a case from my own uh, sort of uh, a, which was basically he had a CABG in 2021, LAD, uh, SVG, RCA, and diagonal, presented with ACI just three months later. He had a Covishield vaccine uh, fairly early, March and April, more than the recommended time. And look at it. See what he has done on the right-hand side, you have the present angio, the left system, the left is completely blocked off. Mind you, that was not there in the pre-angio three months ago. The angio on the left-hand side of your screen is the angio before the bypass. And you see the angio just three months after the bypass, see the left system, the, arts, the LCX was not grafted because it was a nice artery. So why did it happen? This is a patient who did not have a single classical risk factor. He was not a diabetic, mildly hypertensive. His cholesterol was actually below normal, 77, even without a statin. And so this is the OCT. And if you see the OCT runs, it is filled with clots. There is minimal atherosclerotic plaque. 
but this fill with clots. So this is the, 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 the stenting was easy, wasn't difficult at all. That is what any algorithm would tell you. ACS presented with an acute occlusion, uh, top T was positive, stent it and get over with it, put them onto dual antiplatelet and let them go home. But unless you think, why didn't it happen to this gentleman, you're not going to get an answer. So I did progress. I was not satisfied with their just stenting him and sending him home. His vasculitis and collagen workers was negative at that stage. Coagulation and profile work. The only ab ab abnormal was there's a deficiency of protein S. Now, this is something you have not come across. Deficiency in protein S in a 65-year-old woman without any history of DBT. And then you search the literature and if you'll see one or two anecdotal evidence that COVID infection and COVID vaccination causes transient uh, decrease in protein S. So what kind of algorithm would you put this gentleman into? We started with, with the consultant, uh, consult of the hematologist on actually uh, NOAX as well. But... So this was the differential diagnosis. Where there's no clear differential diagnosis. There is no clear algorithm which you would put this patients into why he had that second ACS. So this could be the prothrombotic state, protein S deficiency, uh, uh, allergic reaction, all of that. But he followed it up. Six months, he started losing weight. He has worsening renal parameters. He now has ANCA positive vasculitis and additional uh, treatment with NOAX protein S deficiency, clinical improvement. So this is what I'm saying that if you do not look at individuals, if you do not look as the final up, out of the box points and let a human being take a decision, you would have again had a C, would have again not only had a similar episode, but also a deterioration of his renal function. Finally, if we let it all to the machine learning, who would carry the ethics? Who would carry the responsibility? So you have an adverse reaction. You, you cannot say that the machine learning dictated that to you. So I think what you need to do is to be careful. Yes, it is a very, very useful tool. It is going to be as useful as a stethoscope, as useful as an echocardiogram in the practice of cardiology, but it cannot be the only future of cardiology. It has to be taken as a tool to help the cardiologist to be a better doctor and manage patients better. So the future of cardiologist is a well-trained cardiology human workforce who will be trained in clinical cardiology in artificial intelligence, and above all, learn to question and research. Thank you.